for now. We take you to the Kansas City region. The five seed Maryland taking on the four seed NC State seeking their first Sweet 16 appearance since 2007. John Brickley, Mike Tebow on the call in Raleigh. Maria, thank you as you're watching the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Reynolds Coliseum in Raleigh, North Carolina will be rocking this afternoon with a pair of former ACC rivals getting reacquainted with a spot to the Sweet 16 on the line. The number five seed in the Maryland Terps taking on the number four seed in the NC State Wolfpack. A look at the bracket in the Kansas City region. Winner of this game advances to play on to await the winner of Mississippi State and Oklahoma State. That game coming up Monday night on ESPN2, also available on the ESPN app. John Brickley with you alongside Washington Mystics head coach Mike Tebow. And one of the storylines, coach, emerging in this game is Kiara Leslie, the transfer from Maryland, now with NC State, looking to guide the Wolfpack back to the Sweet 16. Well, after sitting out that transfer year a year ago, she has made a huge difference in the Wolfpack lineup. Those 12 points in their offense has been sorely needed, and she will be a factor in today's game against the team. Had a team high, 13 points in the win over Elon. As for Maryland, part of a balanced scoring attack that's been led by the first team all Big Ten selection in Kyla Charles. Well, seven players between nine points and 18 points a game. Kyla's been great at 18, especially missing Blair Watson, their second leading scorer, who's been out the last two months with an ACL injury. Four players in double figures. Watson, who was the second leading scorer before that torn ACL in January. Both these teams have been playing with a short low rotation. Meanwhile, for Maryland, making their eighth straight NCAA appearance, looking to return to the Sweet 16 for the six times in eight years. And for NC State, it's been quite a while since the Wolfpack were in the Sweet 16, seeking their first appearance since 2007. Louisville has already made it to the Sweet 16, another ACC team potentially joining them with all the games available on the ESPN app. Our officials today, Joe Vasili, Amy Bonner, Jennifer Rizak, and Maryland starting off with the opening possession. And Maryland starts out with what one of, one of the things they do extremely well, get an offensive rebound. It's a huge factor in a lot of their wins. Janelle Lewis able to drive. And Shanice Lewis will go to the free throw line. Let's take a look at the lineups on the floor brought to you by Capital One. So much depth in this lineup, including Lewis, who with the injury to Watson has seen her role elevate this year. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure to put on a freshman point guard to lead this team. Uh, and she's done a great job of it and has gotten better as the season has gone along. Learn the role of distributing for all these other scores. And for NC State, 82% of their scoring this season has come from their starters for the five, averaging double figures. But if it's for NC State, one thing has to improve, and that's the production of Chelsea Nelson. Yeah, she was a little lost in the offense the other day. They're a post-oriented team first, but she got a little bit lost, got herself going a little bit on the boards in the second half. There's Maryland's press back to his own. Nelson was held to just nine points along with 12 rebounds in the win Friday over Elon. Maryland coming off their 20-point victory against the Ivy League champs in Princeton. Akilah Mays, we saw Friday, coach. The offense worked through the six-foot-five senior. They worked a ton uh, in practice yesterday on those back doors and pick and rolls. Pays off right there. Great give and go from Ace Honig, the sophomore out of British Columbia, finding Mays underneath, and NC State has their first two points in the second round. Well, you're going to see primarily North Carolina State in a man defense, as you see right here. They'll go under some pick and rolls, and they'll go over some if it's on a shooter, such as Confroy. The other end, you're going to see a mix of ma a man and zone from Maryland. Shot clock down to nine for Charles, and she traveled with the basketball. Turnover by Maryland. Well, here's the pick and roll from North Carolina State. Ace coming off. Mays rolling to the basket. No weak side help. Lay in. NC State hosting for the first time since 2007 as a steal by Jones leads to a two-on-one opportunity. Misconnects on the pass to Charles. Great feed down low. Jones off glass and in. Stayed with the play. Messed up the two-on-one break, but they still, still stayed spaced and found it underneath. Here's the one-two-two three-quarter court trap. Leaves Leslie open down low. 
And possession to NC State. Westmore, third time in this five-year tenure thus far for NC State, guiding the Wolfpack to the NCAA tournament, including back-to-back -back appearances in the second round. And he spoke with us in shoot-around yesterday. One of the consistent efforts for his team is trying to get the ball to Chelsea Nelson. Yeah, inside out. Uh, well, here they would go to Mays, but she and Nelson worked as a tandem yesterday, one on the low block, one in the high post, and they're going to be interchangeable, hopefully, throughout the game for them. Kristen Confroy called for her first foul. As Mays, a senior out of Greensboro, North Carolina. She's shown great improvement for them this year. She's become an offensive factor for them. They go to her on the block. In fact, she was the go-to player early in the game the other day. And just like Maryland, NC State plays with a short rotation. Yeah, both teams primarily playing eight players. Mays knocks down both, gives NC State the early one-point advantage. Meanwhile, Maryland, first time in over a decade that their program has not hosted a first and second round. As Lewis off the mark on the 12-foot jumper. Well, North Carolina State's trying to bait her into that shot. They're going under the ball screen to see if she'll take the pull-up jump shot. They'd rather have her taking it than Confoy or Kristanaki. Kayla Ely works it inside to Nelson. And they get Lewis for the armbar. Brenda Freeze in her 16th season, guiding this Maryland team to eight straight NCAA appearances, a national title in 2006. And final four appearances, both in 2015 and 2015. And Coach Freeze, this is new for her. Never has Maryland been a number five seed in the NCAA tournament. And she was telling us she really kind of liked it. Uh, the four seed puts a lot of pressure on you at home. Uh, they played a lot more relaxed here. Kayla Ely, the floater. Confroy, the senior, one of three players in the win against Princeton that had double figures, including Christianaki. Transfer from Florida short on the jumper. We should see a good tempo like this the entire day. How about Ely going through traffic, splitting the double team to get her first two points? The redshirt sophomore out of Raleigh. Well, both teams will push it right back at each other, make or miss. Tie up underneath the basket. Possession will go to NC State. In transition, both teams will push it. Ely pushing it ahead, getting right to the rim, had the defense spread out, enough to go one-on-one. -on -one. A tremendous story for Kayla Ely, the redshirt sophomore who saw her season end four games into her freshman year with a torn ACL. And she, along with Koenig, has provided great depth to the backcourt, one of the best in the ACC this season. They've been really good, particularly the last six weeks of the regular season. They found a rhythm together. Ely for three. She shoots 30% for beyond the arc. She's got five to lead the way for the Wolfpack. Well, again, a scouting report. They're daring her to shoot it. She steps up and makes it that time. 7-0 run for NC State. Here in the first four minutes of this opening quarter. Off the bench, the Big Ten Sixth Player of the Year, Aisha Small. And the offensive rebound, that has been key this year for Maryland, averaging 16 on the season. I really feel like this game is going to get decided, possibly, by offensive rebounds. Which team can control the boards? Small draws contact underneath. And she will head to the free throw line. Mays will be called for the foul, her first. Well, Small has been a really big addition to this team. She's another transfer, came from Baylor, uh, trying to find her role on the team last year. They established the six-man persona for her this year, and she's thrived in it. One of two seniors on this roster, and she's provided such great leadership and veteran experience for this young team. Well, the nice thing they can do is they can move her around. They can play her at the point, which she's doing right now. They can play her on the wing. She can take on different matchups on the perimeter. Now she's defending the point, trying to put some pressure on the NC State offense. Here's Leslie, the transfer from Maryland. Down to Mays, one-on-one -on -one with Jones, too strong off the glass, and Mays, an offensive rebound and a reset for the N-State offense. 
Leslie spotting up, feeling it from beyond the arc, her third three for NC State has extended this lead to 12-4. That's the spot that got her going the other day. She made a, sa a shot in the exact same spot in the first quarter on Friday. Charles from the elbow answers the leading score for this Maryland program at over 18 a game. And a timeout on the floor. NC State looking to return to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2007. Kiara Leslie going up against her former team. So far, providing a spark. John Brickley alongside Mike Tebow back inside Reynolds Coliseum here in Raleigh, North Carolina, part of the Kansas City region where NC State, the four seed, leads the number five seed in the Maryland Terps 12 to six. We have already seen coach Louisville punch their ticket with their victory over Marquette, one of eight. Bids up for grabs here today to the Sweet 16. All the games available also on the ESPN app. And here we have seen a difference of philosophies, offense, defense, which one wins out? Well, right now, the defensive one is winning out. North Carolina State holds opponents to 57 points a game. Maryland scores 80 points a game. Both teams are balanced in their scoring, but the, but the defense for North Carolina State is going to be consistent man pressure. Aisha Small for Maryland here with the leading score for Maryland. Charles trying to go off glass. And Kiera Leslie coming off her first three of the game. Turns it right back over. Small with the steal, the third turnover against NC State. Brenda Fries have reached out. She could have caught that pass. <laughs> Brenda Frazier off the bench for Maryland. Left open is Charles. That one rattles in and out. Charles had six points in the first half Friday against Princeton before finishing with a game-high 20. She's had good looks so far. And Nelson travels with the basketball. And you can see that Maryland has made a concerted effort to get Charles the ball in different scoring spots. Last time on the baseline, time before isolated at the top of the key. She's done a great job. We'll be interested to see from a Maryland standpoint, can they get Kristanaki and Confroy and those kinds of players involved in the offense on the perimeter those two combined for 30 points. Confroy hasn't even had a shot yet. Foul on the illegal screen goes against Koenig. Maryland and NC State, former ACC rivals, meeting up here today for the first time since January of 2014. And the Wolfpack especially has been dominant at home against the Terps. Yeah, they, they, they dominate a lot of teams in this building, especially in the old building that was here. It was hard to play in. NC State hasn't lost a home NCAA tournament game since 83. Coming off the victory against Elon. Defensively, as we know how great this NC State team is, the fewest points allowed in an NCAA game in program history. They limited Elon to just 35 points in Friday's opening round win. Well, they're already in Maryland right now, and six points at this point in the game is not what Maryland's used to. Maryland's used to scoring 20 points a quarter. Catch a second round NIT triple header tomorrow at 7 Eastern on ESPNU and the ESPN app featuring Stanford and Oklahoma State, LSU at Utah, and Washington at St. Mary's. And visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Charles called for the foul. That'll be her first. Both teams have spent a lot of time the last day uh, getting ready for this on out-of-bounds plays, both from underneath and on the side, trying to play against pressure. Ely, tough defense by this Maryland half-court set. Here's Nelson, feed to Leslie. Barely gets Nylon on that shot attempt. Frazier in a double team, and she'll head to the free-throw line. 
She was smart enough to put it on the floor there to go before the defender could set, get set to take a charge. She just split the two defenders and drew the contact. Nelson will be called for the foul, her first. First team all ACC selection. Puts Frazier to the free throw line, a 73% free throw shooter. And Maryland will be shooting the bonus the rest of the period. Great. One thing to get there to the bonus, though, you got to knock them down. They've already missed a couple. And Maryland has struggled on the floor, missing six of their last seven shots. And I think they've gotten good looks. Knocks down one of two, does Frazier. NC State, which has yet to go to their bench in this first quarter. Just like Maryland playing with a short rotation. Ely drives through a triple team of Maryland. Mays, second chance off the offensive rebound. Well, Maryland had four straight stops before that one. The offensive rebound, the hustle, gets you an extra, extra possession. Six points for Kella Mays. Has stretched this lead out to seven for the Wolfpack. We've already seen Louisville today advance to the Sweet 16. All the games available on the ESPN app this afternoon. Well, right now, NC State has baited Maryland into their less leading scores, if there's a way to say that, uh, to taking more of the shots. Nelson, 15-footer, falls down for the senior. That'll be her first two points of the game. Largest lead for NC State. She looks like a different player, though, in energy level today and involvement today. I thought she was a spectator a lot early in the game the other day, and today she looks like she's part of it. And a tie-up that keeps possession with Maryland. Going back to Nelson there, Coach, just one point in the first half. I thought it was amazing for the fact that she nearly got another double-double Friday. Well, she just she went and found different ways to get it done. This time she just does it by facing up. They haven't been able to get her ball inside, so she steps outside and gets a knockdown jump shot. But she really struggled just to even touch the ball on Friday. Nelson, who had nine points, 12 rebounds in the win Friday over Elon. Mostly a non-factor in the offense for NC State. And she's really been their go-to player down the stretch of the season. Ileana Christianaki, front iron that three attempt. The transfer out of Florida, a native of Athens, Greece. Part of the Triple C offense for Maryland. Ely, right past her defender, can't connect on the layup. Maryland dodged one there. Maryland looking to push. Small knocks down the jumper. She has a confident look about her right now. She was checked into the game, uh, looking to be aggressive. Maryland with just their third made field goal in this first quarter, shooting three of 13 from the field. Leslie, long range. Gets the lucky bounce to drop. A long two for Leslie. You'd have to imagine the transfer from Maryland has a little added motivation going up against her former team. Yeah, she's got to be excited about this. Anytime you play against your former team, especially in the game with this kind of implication, you've got to be excited. Charles looked like she got away yeah, with a traveling did. violation. Less than 30 to play in the opening quarter. Christianaki. She hasn't been close on her shots. But another offensive rebound for Maryland, and they can hold for the final shot of this opening quarter. Amy Bonner with the call. It's going to be a defensive foul against NC State, and that's got Wes Moore heated right now. Amy is saying that she was held before the offensive foul, that there, there was an arm grab before that. We shall see. High ball screen, holding it for the last shot. Well, there's the arm, and then you get the push off. That's a bang bang. That's a, that's a hard call. Call the, goes against Kayla Ely. That'll be the redshirt sophomore's first. Meanwhile, Aisha Small, 65% free throw shooter, and here's Westmore pleading his case. And we have a few more thousand referees <laughs> with us tonight, too. It's 
Small now with five points. And Maryland has cut it down to a seven-point deficit. Closing seconds. Armani Hawkins into the game. Leslie throws one up. And the first quarter comes to a close here at Reynolds Coliseum. Winner of NC State, Maryland, heading to Kansas City for the Sweet 16. It's the Wolfpack holding firm with a seven-point advantage at the end of one. Back here in Raleigh, NC State with a seven-point advantage on Maryland to get you set for the second quarter. John Brickley alongside Mike Tebow. And for NC State, they are known to be a defensive team this year in the ACC. That's not the case that what we saw in the opening quarter. Well, right now, uh, they're scoring. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and they're not that far off their average, but they've done both well. They've had efficient. They're shooting 50 percent from the floor and they're holding Maryland to 20 percent, 20 percent from the floor. NC State knocking down seven made field goals, including six points from Aquila Mays. And on the season, NC State ranked 13th in the ACC in scoring and out of the timeout. How about that for Small getting Maryland on the board? Steal right. They, they've just put their press on right from the side out of bounds. That 1-2-2 two, two press that Brenda Freeze relies on to stymie the offense for the opposition. Chelsea Nelson, long range, counted in the foul. Well, Chelsea Nelson says, you know what? If you can't get me the ball on the block or they're going to double team me, let me just go out here where I'll, I'll take care of it on my own out here. And that'll be Charles' second foul of this first half. She will head to the bench. And that puts Nelson to the free throw line. 71% on the season, the number one score and the number one rebounder this year for NC State. You know, it's funny. We watched uh, practice yesterday. They didn't particularly shoot it well at practice yesterday, but today they came in and had a brief shoot around this morning, and their shooting picked up, and it's carrying over into this game. The lead to seven for NC State. Frazier going reverse. And possession will go to NC State with a seven-point advantage. Well, I've been impressed uh, how much pressure uh, North Carolina State's been putting on Maryland just to make them feel uncomfortable shooting the ball right now. It's not stifling, but just uncomfortable. Maryland 4 of 17 in this game. They work it down low to Mays. Turnaround jumper. Rebound comes up to Kristanaki. And stolen away by Leslie. Sets up a two-on-one -on, on the fast break. Leslie with the beautiful move to the basket. Great decision to keep it herself. Seven points for the transfer from Maryland to lead the way for the Wolfpack. Another and another turnover. Miscommunication. Kristanaki thought there was going to be a handoff. And how about Leslie with the Euro step and NC State has stretched out to lead to its largest of the game. Leslie has to be loving this. Do this against your old team. Miscommunication, steal, go. Two on one, good decision not to pass it. Lay in. The AA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by USAA. Insurance, banking, and investments tailored for the military community. 8.40 left to go in this first half. NC State with the advantage thanks to the play of the redshirt junior, Kiara Leslie. Nine points, three away from her season average. And Leslie, who is a junior transfer from Maryland, came over and what a spark she has been here today coach she's been great you know she knows she's hyped up but she's handled that pressure really really well what a block by Mays and the second chance drawing a foul for Maryland I've been impressed with Mays and uh, Nelson right now Leslie the one that came up with the block take a look at the reach by the six foot junior you know, she just got her right out of her hand Leslie, whose older brother, CJ, played here at NC State just a few years ago, and it really has been a perfect fit with the short rotation that NC State has to contend with. Has added to the scoring output for NC State. Meanwhile, Nelson picked up her second foul. 
Well, that's one of the nice things when you get a redshirt transfer too. If they're, you know, the kind of player you need, they've had a chance to sit out a year and practice with you, so they know what your team needs when they start playing. Leslie again driving. And a tie-up with possession going to Maryland. A little optimistic on that one. She thought she could get all the way to the rim and didn't get there. Do you notice NC State compared to their first round matchup because of the fact that they're hosting for the first time in over a decade a much more relaxed setting here today for the team? I do. I think the fact that they had a practice yesterday that actually got kind of some of the ugliness out of things that they were working on. They could play through some things. And I think, you know, just taking the pressure off. Uh, you've won the game. Uh, you have a lot of pressure playing at home from your fans. Now you can relax a little bit and say, okay, this is our opportunity now uh, to move on. Ely called for her second foul. The defense, which has been one of the tops, not only in the ACC, but in the country, getting it done this season. And that has been the philosophy for Coach Wes Moore and a reason why this team is hosting, especially after their performance in the ACC tournament with the victories over North Carolina and Duke. Yeah, they were really good. They rebounded the ball well against those two teams. And in the game that they lost, they played great against Louisville for really long stretches. And when you can do that, you can impress the committee also. And for a Maryland team that's number three in the Big Ten, averaging over 80 points per game and normally shoot 46% from the floor, just four made field goals for the Terps offense in this first half. Well, and they, and they rely a lot on the three-point shot. They're a 38% three-point team, and they haven't made one yet. Jones, the steal, nearly taken away by Leslie, will stay with the Terps. You can just tell the added spark of going up against your former team yeah, with Leslie. See, her body language is so positively, you know, uh, charged today. And the other thing that's, that, that Leslie does for this team is she's another player that you can move around on the perimeter. You can have her guard all three wing positions. Frazier. Good defense put together by Mays and an over the back call that's going to go against Jones. The NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One continues tonight at 7 and 9 p.m. Eastern, 4 and 6 Pacific on ESPN. With more second round matchups, Notre Dame battles Villanova, South Carolina squares off against Virginia. Remember, all the games are also streaming live on the ESPN app. Didn't get a chance to see Dawn Staley coming up against her former team in Virginia. The only person to be named Final Four most outstanding player in a losing effort. Well, I had a chance to coach against Dawn as a player and coach with her with the national team. One of the nicest human beings you could ever be around and a fierce competitor, as everyone knows. A turnover for NC State compared to the four for Maryland. NC State on the season averages under 15 turnovers a game. A couple of their turnovers today have just been kind of relaxed, like just not even paying attention. Working it down low to Frazier. Good no junior. call. That One was a really good foul. no call. She's got five points, and Maryland answers down by seven. Frazier averages ten points off the bench. And turnover number nine for NC State. I think... Yeah, this is, this is one of those ones. I think the official did a really good job of letting that go. No harm, no foul. Maryland, as Small works it inside to Jones. Great high-low. And Maryland starting to chip away at this deficit. Small's been huge for them. She scored off the bench. She's got people involved. She's rebounded the ball. Maryland's bench has been key this afternoon. 14 compared to the seven points from the starting rotation for the Terps. Bad accidental pun there, too, with Small being large, so. <laughs> Wasn't purposeful. Mays with four on the shot clock. That partially Rock. blocked by Jones. Small comes up with the loose rebound. Small, the Big Ten sixth player of the year. 
trying to get into their high post game here. Jones one on one with Mays. Wipe it off. An offensive foul that goes against Jones. Well, for as many times as Frazier's tried to go to the basket, that was probably inevitable. She got the benefit of the call in the last one, not in this one. She leans forward with her left shoulder. Good call. Jones, whose sister, Brianna, played at Maryland. It was a first-round pick in the WNBA. Played for the Connecticut Sun as Jones sits down with the fouls. And I would like any WNBA referee out there that's watching this game to make note that I've said good call twice. <laughs> That's not in your vocabulary. Koenig, open for three. Small, up-tempo, great feed inside to Kristianaki. And Maryland having a little bit of a run down by three. Small did a really good job of looking that one off. Everybody thought she was passing the ball to Confroy on the perimeter, and there was a layup behind the play. They put the weak side defender in a two-on-one position. An 8-0 run by Maryland. Their defense has also had six straight stops. And possession will go to the Terps. This is a great pass. Small bringing it up, looking one way, throwing it the other. And Kristanaki helped her out by continuing to run the floor. Normally, Kristanaki would run to the three-point line. That time, she saw that she had a layup opportunity. And that was the story. 16 assists on 28 made field goals in that win. Friday for Maryland over Princeton. Well, I think two things have happened here. I thought uh, that Leslie got a little bit careless for NC State trying to do a little bit too much. And in the process, Maryland kind of calmed themselves down and got some transition game going. And they've done this with Charles on the bench. Small, unable to go high arcing on the Layup and rebounded by D.D. Rogers, the junior, in for NC State. Winner of this game heads to Kansas City in the Sweet 16 as Mays. Great ball movement, but she was fouled underneath. Well, they really worked hard. They got uh, Maryland caught in a bad decision on the high ball screen. Both players went with the dribbler. And now they can put the weak side defender in a two-on-one position. There's two people on the ball, rotation out, late help coming across to get Mays. Keela Mays, a 65% free throw shooter on the Lisa Leslie award list. She was the focal point in Friday's win over Elon. Well, as an offensive coach, when you have a post player with that size, it's hard to not make her the focal point. Just the other day, it seemed to take some of their other players out of the game for a little bit. Today, they've balanced their offense out a lot better. They've got more people involved. Who knocks down both free throws, coming off an 8.7 rebound, four block performance Friday in the opening round win. Answering is Frazier on the other end. Frazier, the junior, who shoots 50% from the floor. And she has a much bigger role this year than she's had in the past for them. Leslie and Small made contact. Well, Small wants the block shot, as, as does everybody on the Maryland bench. But there might have been body contact, too. Boy, they are going after each other here. Help is a little bit late. Great block effort. I'm, I'm sure they're calling that with the body. So puts Leslie to the free throw line. A 69% free throw shooter. And coming up on the college basketball Northwestern Mutual halftime report, we'll take a look at some of the games on this Sunday, including Tennessee and Oregon State, DePaul, and Texas A&M. Those games also available on the ESPN app as well. Eight total bids on the line to the Sweet 16. We have already seen Louisville, the number one seed, advance past their win over Marquette. And what a job Frazier has been able to do off the bench. Now nine points for the Terps. She's just basically putting her head down and going. Other than that little short baseline jump shot, she's caught it at the elbow and driven it hard. We're going to see a double ball screen here for Koenig, see if they can get the defense to, to make a mistake. Pressure up front leads to an open shot, knocking it down for NC State. Kai Crutchfield, the freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina, 
And NC State now up by five. Lewis missed an opportunity right there to get Kristanaki a three in transition. Crutchfield only a 26% shooter on the season. Frazier back ironed it. Confroy the offensive rebound. Again, NC State scouting report defense baited her into that shot. That's not the best thing she does on the floor. Frazier was better going to the basket. Seven offensive rebounds for Maryland. Christian Aki inside a double team will head to the free throw line. Good little pump fake as she drove it. Got the defense up in the air. Mays called for her second foul. Puts Christian Aki to the free throw line. 74% on the season. Was instrumental coach in the win Friday over Princeton. 16 points on 7 of 14 shooting. She was really good both inside and out and she had some terrific passes uh, down the stretch also. Finding open teammates on the backside. Transfer from Florida. Well, this has turned into a little bit more of the game we expected at the start. The nerves are gone, now you're playing. Difference thus far has been at the free throw line for Maryland. Six missed free throws compared to the six of seven from the line for NC State. Koenig with the short jumper. The sophomore averages over 10 a game, gets her first two points. She has a great looking jump shot. We haven't had a chance to see much of it today, but she's probably the most pure shooter on their team. She was great yesterday at shoot around, made a three. <laughs> we said great shot, she pointed our way. Yeah, she got you in trouble too. <laughs> I was in the doghouse with Westmore for about three minutes in that shoot around. Frazier the miss, Leslie the rebound for NC State. Good look. Koenig open for three. Boy, the crowd was ready for that one to go in. Uh -oh. Turnover. Right idea, just a little bit off. Six turnover for Maryland and Coach Brenda Fries. Trying to get back to the Sweet 16. A year ago, they lost to, Mer uh, to Oregon, I should stay. Well, they didn't know it at the time, but how good Oregon was becoming. They got a good first taste of it. That Oregon team poised to make a run to the Final Four with the play of Sabrina Unescu coming off a triple-double, the 16th in NCAA tournament history. Set to take on Minnesota coming up at 10.30 Eastern on ESPN2 and on the ESPN app as well, a team that Maryland lost to in Minnesota this year. Frazier with five on the shot clock. Minnesota's turned into one of the highest scoring teams in the country. They're fun to watch. Get a chance to see them today. It'll be an exciting game. How does NC State attack this final possession for them with a six point lead? Well, I think, first of all, you got to make sure you use a lot of the clock. And I'll say that and they'll shoot right away. <laughs> Cole traveled with the basketball. Westmore just shaking his head. That's one you've got to use up most of it. Now, Maryland's got an opportunity right here to really make it interesting 10 turnovers four away from their season average and for Maryland holding for the final 15 seconds haven't made a three-point shot the whole half we'll see what they get here Lewis for three ball loose underneath Leslie comes up with it and NC State will go into the break with a 32-26 advantage, the transfer from Maryland, the only player in double figures, 11 points on four of eight shooting, and NC State with the lead at the break. End of the first half, Wolfpack the advantage. Let's go back to the studio with our college basketball halftime report. Maria, Rebecca, and Andy. All right, thank you so much, Britt. Report, welcome inside the studio. Maria Taylor alongside Rebecca Lobo and Andy Landers. Right now, Maryland only shooting at 29%, but only down by six going into the locker room. Well, I thought NC State did a good job of dictating the way they wanted this game to be played, especially on the defensive end. They've been solid. Maryland started the game attacking inside, got to the free throw line, but didn't convert. Only eight for 14 from the line. They haven't been able to get the penetrating kicks that they like on the offensive end. They've only taken three, three 
threes, including that one at the end of the half. NC State has been pretty deliberate on their offensive attack, getting uh, penetrate and kick, uh, getting pull-up jumpers. So they have to feel pretty good about the pace and everything, the way things are going. But Maryland did not play well at all, and they're still within six. Right. Yeah, Wes Moore, if you know Wes at all, there's a couple of things that are going to be important. One, how he defends. I think he's probably accomplished most of what he wants in the first half. Two, rebound the basketball. This is one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Average plus 10 margin over this season. They're even with Maryland. They're probably talking about that at the half. Three, control the tempo. I think Wes Moore and North Carolina State can, can be comfortable with the fact that they've controlled the tempo of this game. Yeah, they're actually one up on Maryland, 20 to 19. So Westmore's got to be happy about the rebounding bounding margin right now. All right. You like it, Nell? We love it. And we also love what we've seen from NC State so far in the first half, second half coming. This halftime report is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. CAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One back inside Reynolds Coliseum here in Raleigh, North Carolina. NC State with a six-point advantage on Maryland in this second round game. Back with Mike Debo, John Brickley with you. North Carolina State, not normally known for their offense, set the tone in that first quarter, shooting 50%, and that told the story in the first half. Yeah, it's a big bonus, and they got production uh, from other people today. Leslie was great today. Mays was a factor inside, and they, they scored at will in the first quarter. Kara Leslie on the wing, three-point shot, driving it to the rim. No help defense. Again, at the top, wide open, knock down three. Kara Leslie, who averages 12 points on the season, had 11 in that first half. The transfer from Maryland and NC State's defense shutting down Maryland in that first half. The Terps with the final 327 of the first half without a made field goal. And how about the percentages for Maryland in that first half? Shot 29% coach. They normally average 47 from the floor. Yeah, and they haven't made a three-point shot. And you have Small and Frazier shooting 16 of your 31 shots. That's not the normal game plan. Akilah Mays blocked by Jones on the opening possession of this third quarter for NC State. Meanwhile, Charles ranking in the top 10 in the ACC. Just two points in the first half for Maryland. And yet the Tufts find themselves only down by six. Well, she had good looks early and missed them. But she didn't get very many opportunities down the stretch of the second quarter. Jones with the spin in the lane. Nice job by Jones to get her six points in this game for Maryland. They might be able to get her isolated one-on-one -on -one a little bit more because they're paying so much attention to the perimeter of Maryland. Ely, no. Too strong on the putback, Mays, but she was fouled. Great hustle running in from 15 feet to get that offensive rebound. Here's Jones one-on-one -on, -one on the low block. Gets one-on-one -on -one coverage, spins back to her left hand. Nice finish over the front of the rim. Jones, who is three of three from the field this afternoon, has Mays to the free throw line, a 65% free throw shooter. NC State trying to make it back to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2007. Last year, you may call the game against Texas in the second round, ended with a couple of controversial calls, so a remarkable job done by Wes Moore in his fifth season here with NC State. And you use that a little bit to uh, have that sting to get him back in that bowl. Like, we got to make up for it this year. Christian Aki, only three points in that first half for Maryland. Lewis with the shot clock to five. Off to Jones. 15-foot jumper drops. Stephanie Jones has had an added boost for Maryland's offense here in this third quarter. Yeah, you know, scouting report uh, defense is such a huge thing. And they gave her that shot because that's not her strength. You know, as a coach, you can live with that a little bit. Jones, who nearly shoots 60% from the floor this season. Great high low to Nelson off the feed from Mays. That's the high low I thought we would see the most of. Getting Nelson and Mays 
at the foul line in the block. They've got caught up doing some other things, trying to get other people involved, but that's the strength of their team right now. Nelson, who averages over 13 a game, one of four players who average double figures for the starters for NC State. Meanwhile, Confroy still looking for her first points. And Chris Janaki, and the foul will go against NC State. I don't know if the defender was still moving or she had her heels in the circle. Tough angle, we got screened off a little bit. And for Mays, that's key, that'll be her third. And you can tell, questionable call in the Here's mind of the, Wes Moore. There's the drive, now she's just late. Mays is trying to get there, but she's not squared up defensively. Ileana Krishnaki, a transfer from Florida. A 74% free throw shooter, and D.D. Rogers will come off the bench for NC State with Mays sitting down with the three fouls. Yeah, you knew if they didn't take Mays out, next time down, Maryland was going to go right back to Jones. How does that change, then, the offensive game plan for Maryland with Mays on the bench? Well, I think you're going to try to see either Charles or uh, Jones get the ball on the block and attack their defender because there's not as much shot blocking ability in the lane. The 1-2-2 press two, two causing havoc, but... Christian is going to get called for the reach and foul her second. And that time, Maryland extended their full court press, or their press to full court. They were up on the ball, trapping the first inbounds. Usually, they wait till you get near half court. Kind of surprised a little bit, uh, North Carolina State. The last time it was this close, it was a 6-3 game. I kind of think Confroy and uh, Leslie have guarded each other a few times in practice for a couple of years. Leslie, the transfer from Maryland. Confroy held scoreless to this point. 15 and a half points she's averaged over the last two games. Koenig for three off the mark on the right wing. Just a bad angle on a block out there for Jones. She didn't get in great position. Men's ice hockey skates towards the Frozen Four in St. Paul. Regional semis begin Friday at 3 Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. And visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Well, that was Jones's third, too. So now she and Mays are evened up on the fouls. Fraser back in the game. Possession arrow to Maryland. So Mays on... The bench with three, Stephanie Jones with three. Winner moving on to the Sweet 16 in Kansas City where they await the winner of Oklahoma State and Mississippi State tomorrow night on ESPN2 and available on the ESPN app. Confroy, floater, too strong, rebound by Leslie. Koenig has done a great job for North Carolina State chasing Confroy around every single screen, making her feel uncomfortable when she catches it. Nelson stripped of the basketball into the hands of Confroy. And a three-second violation turnover on NC State, their 12th. That was probably a good turnover for North Carolina State because it stopped the fast break for Maryland. They had a two-on-one going on the pass to Confroy. The senior... Confroy, who will be heading to Wake Forest Medical School, takes a seat on the bench. A three-point game in favor of NC State. Dominate at home this year, 15-2. Their only losses by 10 points or fewer to Louisville and West Virginia back-to-back. -back. Trying to go on the guard mismatch for Small there. Small, the Big Ten sixth player of the year, tripped up on her way down the court. And she has been the added force off the bench here in this game for the Terps. I don't know where they'd be in this game if she hadn't played so well. Nine points on three of nine shooting for Small, the transfer from Baylor. Nelson with the reach and foul against Maryland. Small on the block, gets Koenig on her back. Gets a little turnaround to the baseline. Feels like she has an advantage on strength and a little bit of size. Little fade away. Nice finish. Meanwhile, Coach, the foul trouble building up for Maryland. Kyla Charles just picked up her third. Jones is on the bench with three. And they're thin enough at the post as it is. Turnover for NC State, closing in on their season average. Maryland hasn't led this game since it was 3-2.
Frazier, good defense in the low post. Good pass, cross court. Small, unable to convert. Leslie tracking down the loose rebound. She's got open space and easy layup. You can see the athleticism of Leslie as she chased that one down. She beat everybody to the ball. A great hustle back by Ely. Steele, numbers the other way for NC State. Ball loose on the floor. That's and it'll just be all Rogers hustle. to the free throw line. That's just all hustle plays. I mean, they probably should have looked for Koenig for the three in transition, but it turned out well because they all hustled after the ball on the missed shot. North Carolina State just playing with a sense of urgency in this half right now. Good defense by Kristanaki to break it up, and then everybody's after the basketball. Look at Leslie Tries with to the shoot hustle. It, shoot it from the floor so she doesn't travel. It's Rodgers to the free throw line. The junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Her father, Rodney Rodgers, who played at Wake. Spent 12 years in the NBA. One of the bench options for Wes Moore. Missing on the free throws. So a chance for Maryland to tie on this possession. Great feed from Confroy to Small. Matched up one-on-one -on -one with Ely. And the foul is going to go against the redshirt sophomore. And that'll be her third foul. Now it's going to be maybe a game of attrition on fouls because the, these teams only go seven or eight deep as it is. When you have that many people with three fouls and you're still mid-third quarter, you've got a little bit of juggling to do as a coach. Listen, if we saw anything what we did on Friday, Erica Cassell is ready to go for NC State. <laughs> Sarah Myers is ready on point for Maryland. Yeah, we saw Sarah Myers early, but not since. Might have got away with the walk on that one. How about the play for Frazier? That bucket puts her in the double figure. She exceeds her season average of 10 on the game. She's now got 11 on four of nine shooting. Nelson was strong with the left hand. I'm not quite sure why Maryland is trying to fight over the screen on Ely. Puts him in a tough help position on all the post players. Christianaki posting up. Nelson skies high for the rebound. Nelson, who had 22, an ACC tournament record in the victory against Duke. Leslie spots up and knocks it down. She's getting way too comfortable. Maryland's giving her way too much space. 15 points from the transfer from Maryland. Kevin Keats, the NC State men's coach, in attendance. And we're starting to hear the fans here inside Reynolds Coliseum. That's not a great possession for Maryland. In transition, numbers for NC State. Ely, the blocking foul that goes against Maryland. And even four minutes to go in the third. Timeout on the floor. Pierre Leslie. Going coast to coast, turning defense into offense, and NC State is rolling. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Brenda Freeze, who led this Maryland program to a national championship in 2006. Also a couple of Final Four appearances as well in 2014 and 2015. But here in the third quarter, a five-point deficit to deal for the Terps. And she's got two special individuals on hand for each and every game. Her twin boys in Tyler and Marcus. Tyler, the one on the left, who at the age of two was diagnosed with leukemia, battled his way through. What a great young man. Marcus as well. Those two during shoot around this week were giving me grief on my bracket for the women's <laughs> side. And as they should have. They also always ask their mom, what end of the court are you going to take so we can shoot at the other end? <laughs> I know her husband, Mark Thomas, is in the stands as well. A little bit nervous right now as Maryland trying to get back to the Sweet 16 for the sixth time in eight years. And there's Mark, my That's... text buddy. <laughs> Mark's a little bit nervous right now. Ely knocks down one of two. She's playing with three fouls. If you're Maryland, the number is just not in favor of a normal Terps offense. What's got to change game plan wise for the Terps coach? They've had no balance to in out. Uh, their best players are not getting shots. I mean, Confroy and Charles are not even a part of the offense at this point. 
Uh, North Carolina State scouting report has said, hey, we're going to make Frazier and Lewis and Small beat us, and that's what they've done. Christian they've Aki made them take the shots. With six on the shot clock, misses the three. Possession will stay with Maryland. Yeah, we, we, I mean, Maryland. So here was Coach Freeze in the pregame with her twins. Tyler Marcus on hand, probably getting some last-minute coaching advice. Well, it's funny. When they were younger, <laughs> they just kind of ran around the gym. They didn't worry too much about the scores. They've, as they've gotten older, now every game means something to them. Nelson called for the foul. That will be her third. So now Mays along with Nelson and Ely all with three fouls. Leslie with the steal, one-on-one -on -one with Charles. Leslie switches hands too strong, but the offensive rebound leads to a second chance for NC State. She's been really opportunistic on the defensive end of getting in passing lanes, anticipating plays that she can go for steals on. Leslie, long range, three, why not? You've got to get closer to her. You've got to make her try to beat you off the dribble into a crowd of, of defenders. 18 points for the transfer from Maryland. Kiara Leslie as NC State has stretched this lead out to nine and an offensive foul on the other end against Maryland. This is an interesting call here. Not, not because it's not the right call, is that Nelson is challenging with three fouls against Frazier and risking getting her fourth on that play. Luckily for her, she got the offensive foul call. She held her ground perfectly. Meanwhile, some other great games going on. Oregon State with a nine-point lead on Tennessee. That game in the fourth quarter. DePaul also leading Texas A&M. We saw yesterday Missouri get upset by Florida Gulf Coast. All the games available on the ESPN app as NC State trying to join Louisville into the Sweet 16. Leslie trying to work it down low to Rogers, intercepted on the pass. Great hustle by Charles to get in front of the play. Frazier again off glass and in. The offense for Maryland has worked through Frazier. 13 points. Well, this is big. She got a technical foul. I don't know if she trash talked or said something to the defender when it went in or yelled at the official for an and one. But a technical foul is a personal foul, too. So you just keep adding to the problems. It's a great drive going to her right hand. Mays is in the way. Yep, she screams and yells at her after the play. That's all, that's almost an automatic technical. So Kiara Leslie's going to go to the free throw line to shoot the technical foul. Frazier now with three fouls, just like NC State. I mean, foul trouble for both sides. You got Charles with three. You got Jones with three. And now Frazier's going to head to the bench. All Leslie. their post players, and that's basically the total amount of post players that they play. And Leslie knocks down both. How about 20 points for the transfer from Maryland? What a game she is putting on here today against her former team. Well, if I'm Maryland, i got to know that she's fired up to do that. And you gotta, you got to pay attention enough to make her uncomfortable. I don't think they've done that to her. She, they did it maybe for about two minutes in the second quarter. Ooh, missed the back door there. Koenig off the feed from Maryland. Mays knocks down the three. Make that 32 straight games with a made three for Ace Koenig. And they have all the momentum right now. They're feeling good about themselves. There's a rhythm to their game. A 13-2 run for NC State. Has stretched this lead out to 12 against the Terps. Largest lead of the game, in fact. And Maryland looks out of sync offensively. Five on the shot clock. Small. Rogers the rebound. Again, they bait the, they, they bait the Terrapins into a pull-up jump shot off the dribble at the foul line by people who aren't their best shooters. Koenig, who is one away from tying the school record for threes in a year. Other end! Crutchfield coming off the bench. And it gets contagious. Brenda Freeze wants a timeout. She's a 29% three-point shooter, just feeding off the energy.
Uh, Nato run for NC State as we take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. Momentum, Coach, it's contagious. Well, Kiara Leslie started it by making one, so Koenig says, well, I'll join in. I'll knock one down. And Crutchfield says, might as well join the party, too. I'll knock one down from the other side. Opens up the lead. It's amazing. Maryland is the 10th best three-point shooting team in the country. They don't have one made today. And it's North Carolina State knocking down the threes. NC State, who on the season averages under 40% from the floor, Mays the block. Today they're shooting 50% and nearly 60% in this third quarter. They've just uh, they've gotten a great feel for the game. Their scouting report has been good on the defensive end and on the offensive end. They've gotten everybody involved in their offense. Maryland needs an answer. Charles, who has just been held to two points on one of five shooting. He's been averaging 18 a year. Again, Maryland dealing with a short shot clock, and Charles out of the timeout with a much-needed bucket. That Maybe that'll get her going again. Charles, the only Maryland sophomore in the program history to average 18 points per game. Today, just four points. And Maryland finds themselves down by... 13 with under 30 seconds to go in this third. Well, they're in the zone now trying to take away the high-low game. But you have this feeling they might leave somebody more open than they want to. Corner three, Crutchfield. Nothing but nylon. She's the Erica Cassell for this game. For those who were watching the other day, Cassell came off the bench for NC State, knocked down three. Crutchfield decided it's her turn. Three-point shooting, highlighting a spark in the third quarter for NC State. Westmore and the Wolfpack haven't been to the Sweet 16 since 2007. They're 10 minutes away from punching their ticket to Kansas City. Back with you on the campus of NC State as you take a look at Coach's Corner, Jim Valvano, the great Norm Sloan, and Kay Yao, the legendary figure in women's basketball here in the state of North Carolina. And for NC State fans, Coach, they've got to be happy. This team is normally known for their lockdown defense. And offensively today, they have been just lights out with a 16-point advantage. Well, they've done, I think, a better job with their scouting report defense than Maryland has with theirs. I think North Carolina State has locked up all the key scores for Maryland, where Maryland has not done that to North Carolina State. They've allowed people to move the ball. They've gotten shots for almost everybody. They've got North Carolina State uh, has gotten a balance of offense inside and out that they don't always get some nights. And they're making shots that sometimes don't make, especially the threes. And it's not about Chelsea Nelson today. It's about the junior transfer from Maryland, Kiara Leslie. She's got 20 points to lead all scores. I think she's been too comfortable. I mean, she's made great efforts on the defensive end to get the ball back. But she's played, she's made several jump shots today with the defenders hands down. And we all know the old adage, hands down, man down. And that's what it's been for Leslie shooting the ball. Leslie, who averages 12 points on the season, leading the way with 12, 20 points at the game high 13 in the win Friday versus Elon. And NC State firing on all cylinders, Coach. They've knocked down their last four three-pointers to stretch this lead out to 16. Well, I think if I'm guarding Kira Leslie, i got to be up closer with a hand up in her, making her take a dribble into traffic. If you're Maryland coach, how do you break through this deficit? Well, you're going to have to get some steals. You're going to have to turn them over some, which is not the strength of their defense. And you can't allow just wide open jump shots and offensive rebounds. Quickly on the outlet, Shanice Lewis, the freshman point guard for Maryland. Jones playing with the three fouls. They've moved Kyla Charles here to the three to try to have a bigger lineup and change the matchups. But no Confroy, no Kristanaki to start the quarter. I don't know where the three-point shooting is going to come from. Charles front-ironed it. The sophomore struggle, two of seven from the floor. Meanwhile, Leslie's been the story. A rebound shy of a double-double. NC State looking to build on this 19-4 run. That one nearly halfway down for Koenig. Small on the outlet pass. Misses from point-blank range. Draws contact, will head to the free throw line. Well, I'm just, uh, I, I, I'm a little bit befuddled in the sense that Maryland, who normally can find a rhythm offensively, is just constantly searching today. 
They're frustrated that Confloy and Kristen Naki have not been a part of the offense. So the answer now is to try to go bigger and see if they can do it physically. And if they can knock down free throws like this, maybe they'll get a chance. But they're going to have to really pick it up at the defensive end. Maryland on the day, 11 of 17 from the free throw line. No productivity from the three C's in Charles, Kristanaki, or Confroy. Those three have combined for nine points. And that's just good scouting report defense. Take away the strength of a team, make them go somewhere else, and that's what they've done today. Here's the double pick and roll to get Koenig popping back. Koenig launching from three, and she has now tied a school record with 90 made threes. Done by Jennifer Howard twice in NC State history. And a turnover on the other end for the Terps. That's just too easy giving it back. Double screen for Koenig at the top of the floor. See if they get the defense to go under, which they did. Charles with her hands down. Too late to get him up. Meanwhile, Louisville, a top seed. They have advanced into the Sweet 16. All the games available on the ESPN app. What a rough day it could turn out to be. Tennessee trailing right now to Oregon State in the closing minute. As Nelson off the mark, we also see Texas A&M battle tested. And Nelson off the turnover. Turns it into two points. It's a sloppy play by Maryland right now. They've had two unforced turnovers that have led to Maryland uh, baskets. And another great help. Nelson coming across, anticipating the pass. Things are starting to fall apart for the Maryland Terps. NC State a 61-42 lead. Looking to get back to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2007. Leslie one-on-one -on -one with Charles. Nelson off the push-off with Jones. Nice step back, just didn't go down. Janice Lewis going coast to coast. High off glass and in for the freshman. They need more of those. They're going to need to get four, five, six defensive stops in a row Janice to try to Lewis. get this momentum back. Janice Lewis, one of the most steady freshmen to come along in quite some time for the Maryland program. Only three points. All of a sudden, coach, the offense working around Chelsea Nelson. Koenig, block shot by Jones into the hand of Leslie, fouled by Small. That's a tough one. You bail somebody out with three seconds. Well, this is the steal by Nelson coming up the floor, just reaches in, knocks the ball loose, drives it right back to the rim. There's no defense for that. Once it's taken away, that's an easy, that's just taking the easy way to the rim. The number one score, the number one rebounder. What do you make of her potential for the WNBA? Well, you know, the other day I kind of struggled with giving you a good answer on that. She's uh, she's a 6'2", at best, power forward. I think she's going to need to extend her range a little bit to play at our level. She rebounds the ball well enough at this level. She's a physical athlete, but scoring at, at, at our level at the four, that's the unknown about her. Tierra Leslie making one of two as Jones quickly from the feed from Small with the answer for Maryland. Well, it was a small thing on that one, but Confroy was on the weak side, so the defense was not more as willing to help on the post pass as they were two minutes ago when, when the shooters were not in the game. Maryland shooting 34% in this game. Koenig at the point for the Wolfpack. Great feed to Nelson. Unable to convert. Maryland needs answers, and they need answers in a hurry. Confroy was wide open. Inside to Jones with the layup. She has scored the last four for the Terps. They missed Confroy for a three on that one. But she made the good decision. The defense is coming to help on her. Nice drop-off pass. Eight of her 12 points coming in the second half. Playing with the three fouls. Well, this has been interesting. 
They've been playing without Ely in the lineup and they've put the ball in Koenig's hands for a lot of plays in the last three or four minutes and she's delivered. Meanwhile, the Division I Men's Basketball Championship second round continues today on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For matchups and game times, go to NCAA.com. I have never in a three-day span gone to bed in different emotions. I was angry when Arizona State lost. <laughs> I was happy when Virginia lost because it busted everybody's bracket. And then Loyola Chicago comes up with a win yesterday over Tennessee. And to finish the night off, Michigan knocks in an incredible three. It, it, both tournaments, men's and women's, have been really good so far. Arizona with that loss to Buffalo, one of the big upsets in the NCAA tournament this year. None bigger than UMBC, though. We've had a 16 beat a one on the women's side, though. Harvard did it against Stanford. It's been a long, long time. 20 the, years since that happened. With the number one seeds in the tournament right now, the last couple years on the women's side, that's going to be a real hard one. The well, winner of this game advances to play in the Sweet 16 against either Oklahoma State or Mississippi State. Charles, way off the mark, just not as found her shot here today. Well, I tell you what, after watching the two teams practice yesterday, you couldn't have predicted this just in the sense of who was going to, you know, stay with the scouting report more than anything else. NC State has just been great at it. Frazier, bucket in the foul. Frazier, who on the year averages 10 points on the season. She's got 15 to lead the way. Does Maryland have one last charge? They're down by 12. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One, official bank and credit card of the NCAA. What's in your wallet? And in part by Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. Here's a look at the bracket in the Kansas City region. NC State and Maryland, a 12-point lead for NC State. Winner moves on to the Sweet 16, where they will either get Mississippi State or Oklahoma State. And judging by the SEC today, Coach, could be a rough day for that conference. Yeah, Tennessee, Oregon State is not a total uh, surprise. Oregon State can match up with Tennessee in the post with Gulich against Mercedes Russell. Meanwhile, A&M struggling as well to DePaul. Yesterday we saw just domination to a whole new level for UConn. 94 points in the first half. And meanwhile, the double-digit seeds making some noise, including Buffalo with their impressive victory. Got Buff Buffalo men and women moving on uh, from the first round this year. Meanwhile, A&M just took a lead with a three with 2.8 seconds left. That game over on the ESPN app. Great action today. Eight total bids on the line to go to the Sweet 16, including this one here in Raleigh, where North Carolina State trying to get back for the first time since 2007. Well, they need a couple quick stops and scores right now. 7-0 run for Maryland. Shooting Maryland numbers offensively in this fourth quarter. Four of seven. Nelson. No, but the offensive rebound and a reset on the offensive side for NC State. Leslie fires it up. No, Nelson, another offensive rebound. They might have been wise to just to use a little bit of time there. Leslie, one point shy of tying her career high. She's got 21 points on 7 of 14 shooting. Koenig, always dangerous. The feed to Mays. Knocks down the jumper. Koenig, who averages three assists per game. The great feed inside. Jones too strong, and it's a quick one and done for Maryland. As a coach, I love seeing carryover from a prior's day's practice to the game. And that play right there with Koenig and Mays is something they worked on for about five, ten minutes yesterday. Baseline drive against pick and roll. You got Mays popping back. Executed to perfection. Left hand, finder, nice jump shot, easy play. Charles called for her fourth foul. Meanwhile, NC State, you mentioned Koenig, show, so versatile and so intelligent. Great basketball IQ. We saw that yesterday with her interactions with Wes Moore, so involved in the offensive scheme. She always had a good question. You know, sometimes players just ask questions to ask them. She had a question that made sense in their game plan to make sure they were all on the same page. How about that bucket? 
from Kayla Ely. Eight points total for the redshirt sophomore. She along with Nelson who has started every game this season for the Wolfpack. Well that timeout, they came out with the perfect answer. Two quick buckets, get the momentum back. Frazier gets Mays on the contact, will go to the free throw line. That'll be the fourth on Mays. And Sports Center tonight after the NCAA Women's Tournament on ESPN with John Anderson and Kevin Connors. They'll wrap up the Rockets and Timberwolves and let you know if Houston extended their lead in the West. Plus Tom Rinaldi and Andy North preview Tigers Road to the Masters and which Cinderella has the best shot to move on to the Elite Eight Sports Center, 11 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. I got to tell you, Loyola Chicago with Sister Jean, the 98-year-old nun, the team chaplain. That has been one of the best stories in quite some time. On the men's side. And they're telling her she has to change her bracket because I think she had him losing after this round. <laughs> she had, they told her to redo the bracket. And did you see Candace Parker's reaction after Tennessee fell? I got to say, I feel for her. I feel for our colleague, Carol Lawson. That was a rough night to be a Tennessee fan. And today won't make it any better if Oregon State wins. Ely. Meanwhile, Texas A&M able to advance. Great feed from Charles to Lewis. Well, you've got a quick glimpse of, I think, the future of Kyla Charles, playing as a ball handler on the perimeter. And the foul that goes against Charles. That will be her fifth. She has fouled out of this game with 2.30 left. Frustrating day for Charles. They, the North Carolina State Scout Report went after her. They made her feel uncomfortable. She missed a couple shots early, and they have just stayed attached to her for most of the day. An all Big Ten first team selection is Charles, but she'll have to watch the rest of this game from the bench. Well, State now just taking time off the clock. NC State, first time in over a decade they've hosted. Koenig drives past her defender. That puts her in a double figures and a steal again. Just NC State known for their defense today. Their offense has been clicking on all cylinders. And it's funny, they don't really normally press you full court, but they have taken opportunities today to come back and steal outlet passes after made baskets. This is the third or fourth time they've done that. Look at the play by Ely. Forced on the foul by Jones. Well, I thought we would have drama in this game, and North Carolina State basically seized the drama by the throat in the third quarter and said, no way today. So Frazier was the one called for the foul. That'll be her fourth. So judging by the two performances you have seen from NC State, what do you make of their chances if they hold on here and head to Kansas City? Um, depending on which team they play, it's going to be a little bit different. When you play Mississippi State, you have to deal with the size inside of Tierra McCowan and the perimeter three-point shooting. They showed today they could take away the three-point shooting from a team. If you do that against Mississippi State, you're, you're risking the inside play. Against Oklahoma State, they're a little bit different. They have a point guard uh, in Goodwin who ch attacks the basket all the time. They're going to have to play against pick and roll and penetration if they play Oklahoma State. Confroy with the reach-in foul. But I know they'll be prepared. That's the one thing I know about North Carolina State. No matter who they play, they will have a plan that makes sense. The bigger question mark, though, for NC State, we saw their defense shine against Elon in Friday's opening round. Today, the offense has been stellar. Can they make a deep run in this tournament with a short rotation? It's a little harder against those two teams who play, you know, 9, 10 people uh, in Oklahoma State and Mississippi State. They can't get in foul trouble. Uh, they're going to have to knock down some threes to make those teams play honest against them. They've done that today, but, but they have to be better offensively. Now 
Want to welcome in those that just saw Texas A&M come up with a come-from-behind victory over DePaul to advance to the Sweet 16. As here in Raleigh, as you take a look at Aquila Mays, who has fouled out of this game, the Wolfpack, who are trying to make it to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2007, have a 14-point lead on the number five seed in Maryland. John Brickley alongside Washington Mystics head coach Mike Tebow. The offense for NC State. Normally not their strength has proved to be that today, their strength. They have. I, I think part of it, they've jump-started with how good they've been defensively, but they've had balance. They've had scoring inside from Mays and Nelson. They've had steals that got them transitions. Leslie has been great today, both on the perimeter and driving the ball. And then the second half, they've got knocked down three three-point shots. They made four straight threes when the game was on the line. And NC State, their starters, all five have put up double figures here today led by Kiera Leslie the transfer from Maryland 21 points seven made field goals a couple of pair of threes Westmore has to be happy the pressure of hosting for the first time in over a decade even admitted that was going to be a challenge at shoot around yesterday but here today behind the play of Kiera Leslie with a double double 21 points 11 rebounds they are 60 seconds away from celebrating in Kansas City. We always wonder how, when you have a player who's transferred and plays against their old team, how they're going to handle it. They're going to try to do too much or not. She's handled it terrifically. She had one little stretch in the first half where she maybe have forced things, but she's knocked down shots. She's gotten the passing lanes. She's gotten steals. She'll feel great about this win. Last year, NC State fell to Texas in the second round. And Leslie had to watch from the bench. Blocking foul against the Wolfpack. This has been one of the best years in terms of coaching by Wes Moore. Had the early losses to Rutgers and South Dakota State. Lost several players to graduation, a lot of his offense. And he still comes back and has a starting group that gets 80-some percent of their offense. He's manufactured uh, offense when it was struggling. He let his defense carry him for stretches of the game. And now their offense is starting to get a little bit of rhythm to it. The turning point of this game came when Maryland was within one, when it was a 37-36 score. And then NC State went on a 16-2 run and have never looked back since. I think the other thing when you judge, you know, how a program is or how a coach is doing is, does your team improve throughout the season? Are they playing their best basketball when it counts? Clearly, North Carolina State has the last few weeks. And I will say this, one of the best shoot-arounds to be a part of. <laughs> Wes Moore might be one of the most charismatic head coaches I have ever seen. Yeah, the emotion, he wears all of it on his sleeve. And the sarcasm comes with it, too. Did a great job at Chattanooga for a number of years. Came to NC State, where they have now made it to the NCAA tournament three of his first five years. Was the ACC Coach of the Year. There's that great trademark smile that we're known to seeing from Coach Moore. Well, he's traded the smile now. He got that instead of the grimace that he's had a few times. And let's not forget, too, Coach, NC State was a team that was battling for a top 16 position throughout the year. Had it not been for that victory against Duke in the ACC tournament, they wouldn't have been hosting. A first and second round. In fact, it might have been reversed. Maryland might have been actually the host team. And for Maryland, a team, Kyla Charles, their leading scorer. Great growth from her freshman to her sophomore year for Coach Freeze. Held to just four points in this game. Terps, who have won four or five coming in. Charles was an all Big Ten first team selection. But that injury to Blair Watson who came in as the second leading scorer, had the torn ACL, changed things up this year. How does Maryland regroup going into next season? Well, you know, your, some of your key players uh, in Kyla Charles, Jones, Kristen Aki are all coming back. Uh, Blair Watson hopefully will be healthy. They've got a great recruiting class coming in. I think that they feel that the future is really, really bright for this team. Losing Convoy will be a big loss, a small. They've been big contributors all year, but they have a lot coming back next year. And for NC State, the story today, the transfer from Maryland, Kiara Leslie, 21 points, one point shy of her career high and 11 rebounds. And she was playing on a whole different level today. Yep, she was 
she was at that notch where she could make things happen on both ends of the court and did. As NC State with a 14 point lead as we close in on the final 30 seconds. Koenig comes up with the loose rebound. NC State as the fans here inside Reynolds Coliseum come to their feet. A tremendous job this afternoon holding Maryland to just under 38% shooting on the day. Their offense which shot 50% in the first quarter as Christian Confoy, the senior, along with Stephanie Jones, comes off the bench. Nelson takes a seat as well. Ten rebounds, or I should say ten points and seven rebounds for Chelsea Nelson. And the fans here in Raleigh, for the first time since 2007, are going to see their Wolfpack head to the Sweet 16. Our final score, 74-60. NC State advances in the bracket where they await the winner of Mississippi State and Oklahoma State. All five starters finished in double figures for the Wolfpack, including the transfer from Maryland, Kiara Leslie, 21 points as NC State, for the first time since 2007, is heading to the Sweet 16. Let's get you back to the studio as we'll get you caught up on all the latest scores from around the country. Four teams have punched their ticket to the Sweet 16. Maria Taylor alongside Rebecca Lobo and Andy Landers. Thank goodness we don't have to play in the games because our hearts almost stopped watching all of them. <laughs> Another game that we had on air, Maryland taking on NC State. Again, an opportunity to play in the Sweet 16 on the line. Kiera Leslie with the steal. Let's go coast to coast with it. Kara Leslie had a terrific game for NC State. She had 21 points, 11 rebounds. Remember, Maryland's her old team. She transferred from Maryland. From, from the get-go, NC State did a great job of establishing pace, how they wanted to play. They didn't let Maryland get out in transition. Defensively, they didn't give up three-point shots. They set the tone. They looked like the experienced team who was ready to, to set the tone and the pace. Well, Maryland shot just 29% from the field which is one of their worst outings. The Terps do average 70 points per game over the last eight games, but there you have it. They only were able to score 60 in the matchup against NC State. And remember a month ago, it was a different Terps team. They were on top of the Big Ten, averaging 83 points per game, but their offense just completely disappeared. Uh, they were held under 70 points in two of their biggest games, which included the Big Ten championship, and then obviously the single elimination game 